Alright, well this is a video update on my charging system I set up for my Polaris Ranger. So I finally got it working. This is the basics of what I'm putting in my Ranger, or these batteries that I had in my solar system. And they're L16AH Trojans, 6 volt. At any rate, uh, they're going to fit. So what I've done here is I've got my uh, two cables, 48 volts, coming off that pack into a uh, quick connector, but high amperage. And then the cable runs over to my charger. And I've got an Outback uh, FlexMax 80 charger on the wall. So when you plug it in, the charger uh, powers up and uh, within uh, about 30 seconds or less it's on and working but uh, what it runs off of you can see it comes back over comes into a transfer switch which is connected to my solar so what I'm doing is <clears throat> I've got two sets of panels on the roof about 7k of solar and one string comes through one charge controller one string comes through the other charge controller so I've uh, stolen the, uh, basically the input for this one is right here. It comes through the E panel and comes into the bottom. So I've stolen the input, which is about three and a half, uh, or let's say 3,500 watts uh, on one string up on the roof comes to this one. The input from this one goes over into this transfer switch. So basically I can take the input, if I switch it one way, for example right now, if I switch it down, it will go uh, right here and it'll charge my battery. If I switch it the other way, my home battery, if I switch it the other way, then the output from the solar panel goes across and it goes over there to that charge controller and then uh, that one feeds these uh, Trojan batteries which are going to be in my uh, EV and I'm mocking them up over here right now. I've got basically a box which is the right uh, dimensions for those batteries so you can see just sitting in there about how, how they stick out so I've done some videos showing how I'm going to cut these uh, rails out because basically this bottom of this battery has got to be down about the level of the bottom of the frame to get it low enough where it's going to clear and even then uh, originally they had some trays so you can see the original trays that were laying in here so I'm not going to be able to use those anymore those sit right in this right in this area you have one on one side, one on the other, and you can, basically for storage under the seat. But they will drop down far enough that uh, I'll be able to get the seat on and get all, all my wiring in here, and it won't be a problem. Uh, dimensionally, it's pretty tight. It's uh, not really necessarily that easy to see, but you can see the plug. It's almost basically touching. Actually, uh, from looking at it, the inside batteries are going to be about where I've got that one right now. Uh, 20, there's 24 inches, so that's approximately right where it's sitting right now is approximately 24 inches from the uh, back uh, uh, cross rail there. And on the inside, or the, I should say the outside batteries, the one that's going on the outside of the rail, I'm going to bring them a little farther forward. They're actually going to come up to about uh, midway. And that will keep them farther away in front of this uh, tire. So they'll probably uh, be about right here approximately on the back set or maybe a little farther forward on the outside set where the inside will come all the way back to that uh, rail right there basically and they'll sit down in there. So these inside mounts are going to be cut out and this is going to be cut out. And then I'll have something uh, new here because uh, otherwise this rail would just be sticking out here and you kind of need this. So once I cut that off, uh, there'll be some new piece from here across and then maybe even a, a cover on the outside, a sheet metal or something to cover the battery from the outside here. Main thing is getting them uh, in here at the right height and then uh, in some type of mounting arrangement so they're not going to move around. And then uh, uh, so my plan at the moment is just use uh, probably 3 16 uh, steel plate on the bottom. They'll just be on one big plate. 
Uh, probably it won't be able to weld that in because it looks like these batteries uh, you're almost going to have to stick them in from the bottom or even if not because these, in, in, these inside batteries you can't just put them through here and then set them up they, they're not going to do they're not going to work like that so this bottom is going to have to at least come down some so when you put the battery in it'll clear this uh, top rail up here so when you go in with it it's going to have to go down before it can be flipped up. So there's room to get them in through this opening, but uh, they're not going to be able to just go in uh, and sit on a rail that's, uh, or a bottom that's uh, this far up. The bottom's going to have to be down. So the whole bottom tray is going to have to be able to drop down where you can get the batteries in and then that's going to, have to be lifted back up and then bolted uh, up here somehow so it, uh, it's going to be a little bit more effort but you know putting batteries in and out is not something uh, you plan on doing very often so i'm sure we'll come up with some good uh, arrangement and then i'm thinking about extra weight so i'm going to have to add a brace in here somewhere uh, maybe put an, an upright uh, from here to here uh, it'll be enough room to get the battery in between and drop them in uh, or maybe i'll end up putting uh, the rear battery in from the front and then sliding it back and then the front battery in second secondarily something like that the outside battery is obviously a lot easier than the inside ones and you can't just drop them down from the top there's no it's just not going to fit it's not going to work like that so just only x amount of room here to make it work so we'll see how it goes but uh, i think it's gonna work <clears throat> this is gonna take a little effort any rate so i got my charging system laid out i've already uh charged up these batteries uh with the flex max and that works so uh, basically i'm going to take this cable this will be the cable uh my charging cable and it'll come out uh, probably right here in the front where this little hole is bring the cable out here and I'm actually going to sit something here I've been wanting to put something here anyway to hold gloves or hats or uh, just stuff so I'm going to have something here I'm not sure what and uh, some type of container with a lid or something like that so it'll keep it from getting wet and getting rained on or water sprayed on it mud all that kind of thing so it'll just uh be a connection to the batteries it'll be live all the time basically and then uh, i'll pull that plug out uh, and just this just snaps together real easy charge them up right off the solar probably shouldn't take more than a couple of hours you know depending but even if they're pretty far down uh three hour charge in the middle of the day when I've got the most amount of power coming in ought to work uh, pretty good charge up the solar off the solar uh, a lot faster than you could do off a, a 220 connection or whatever so that's the plan at the moment I've also got a uh, <coughs> connection for a level 2 charger so I'm using I'm going to use a plug-in type level two charger over here, but I'm not going to use that for the uh, Polaris. Uh, use that for uh, maybe a zero uh, motorcycle. Been looking at a, a DSR, and they you can buy those with a level two. So I've got a plug for that, and uh, I'll just mount that here. And generally those have a it's 15 foot to 25 foot cable on them. Uh, so that I can charge up my motorcycle the same way that I could charge up the uh, EV. And you can kind of see my uh, winch and how I was uh, doing the winch. There's the uh, connector for it and everything. I had a couple of batteries in here originally. Uh, it, and they worked. But uh, I don't need to do that anymore. Since I've got these big Trojans, I'm just going to run the power which uh, basically comes off here. I'm gonna run that back, a couple battery uh, connections back and connect to my uh, batteries and uh, 
just tied into two of these Trojans in series, just series two together. So just come back up under underneath and come out and connect to two, uh, two of the Trojans. And that's a pretty high amp 12 volt uh, connection. Then if I uh, need to use it, uh, maybe I can always take it off two batteries and switch it to a different two. So I don't uh, drain on just two batteries. I don't use it very often, so it's not that big a deal, but uh, that'll be a, uh, an easy way to get around having those batteries in the front. So that's uh, all we got to update until we uh, get to do some cutting and welding on this and get these batteries fit in here, and that'll be a, uh, at least another month or so before we get all that done. And uh, probably the front differential is going to have to come out and... Uh, it's a little dark down there, so can't really show you much, but those uh, bearings, the outside bearings on that front differential are, seem to be pretty loose, and they rattle around, make noise, so that's going to have to come out and be uh, redone as well, so we'll do some video on it. So thanks for watching my channel, and I'll keep it updated. Thanks.